their own separate enclosures. In actual fact, everything here, the covers for the lights, they have little light emblems so that you know that this is how you change the bulb. Um, this is the water windscreen wiper fluid uh, uh, filler. And you can see that there are emblems all over the car. Things are clearly marked. There's labels telling you what everything is. And it's interesting that Mercedes engineers were refused point-blankly refused access to inspect the wreckage of the car uh, which was um, carrying Diana. And I believe that's because um, if you were to drill any new parts into this engine, if you were to add anything at all, uh, an experienced Mercedes engineer would immediately uh, be able to detect that there'd been a modification. Um, and even somebody without any um, specialist Mercedes mechanical training would be able to tell that these um, specifically designed components, which are all um, constructed and, and laid out in a very, very logical manner, even somebody with the mild amount of mechanical knowledge would be able to detect a part which uh, should not be there. And that is uh, why I believe that um, Mercedes engineers have been refused access to the wreckage to this day. And uh, their offer was refused immediately after the crash. And still, for the last 10 years, the wreck has not been given over to Mercedes. Well, I've driven this Mercedes for nearly two years. And when I saw the photographs of... Uh, the crash blown up so that we could really analyze the wreckage um, as it was photographed by the world's media as it sat in the in the tunnel before it got whisked away um, I f just found it difficult to believe that the metalwork the very very thick metalwork that this car is made of would just fold up like a crisp packet I mean there's obviously a very big difference between um, this S-Class Mercedes and something like a Renault Twingo. And the reason that people pay a lot of money for, you know, the S-Class Mercedes and Range Rovers uh, and Bentleys is because they want a lot of, um, you know, robust construction around them as they're driving. People pick these cars for the safety aspect. And um, my feeling is that um, the, the Mercedes was weakened. I feel that the, the structure of the Mercedes was probably uh, partly drilled, partly sawn through across the roof section and across the, the bonnet area there. And that um, I don't believe that the impact was, you know, 100 miles an hour or 100 kilometers an hour even. Um, I, I think that the impact probably took uh, place when the car was running at maybe 45, 50, 55, 60 miles an hour maximum. Um, now, we do know that the Mercedes was stolen um, several weeks before and that, um, if, you know, the various reports vary that you read, um, but um, apparently one of the doors was removed and the microchip which manages the electronics for the engine system um, was also taken, was also stolen. Well, those chips can be bought on eBay. Um, 
and various Mercedes parts uh, companies make those chips available. It has a retail value of about £120. Now, it makes you wonder why somebody would bother um, stealing the car at gunpoint while there was somebody driving the car in the centre of Paris just to steal a £120 microchip, which they could buy from eBay. Well, I'm actually sitting in the same position that uh, Diana sat in when she left in the Mercedes from the rear entrance of the Ritz Hotel. And according to the official Lord Stevens report, the seat belt was jammed in the retracted position. Now, this is a luxury vehicle, and the seat belts are actually tailored and have their own conduits. Uh, which they travel in, and I find it impossible to believe that the seatbelt was jammed by pure accident. My feeling is that this is a highly engineered vehicle and that somebody tampered with the mechanics of the vehicle and also they deliberately jammed the seatbelt um, in actual fact right up until the moment of impact with the 13th pillar um, no one in the car was wearing a seat belt apparently Trevor Reese jones may have used his uh, seat belt at the last minute uh, allegedly um, and unfortunately Trevor Reese jones has been uh, you know really not a, a, a good resource of information about what was going on in the Mercedes um, there is one comment which alleges uh, that he said once that uh, he doesn't remember much about the journey in the Mercedes and he hopes that he never does remember. Four occupants, yeah. Henri Paul at the wheel. Yeah. Uh, he didn't have a seatbelt. No. Trevor Reese Jones sitting next to Henri Paul in the front passenger seat, and he didn't have a seatbelt. No. The stories up until very recently were that that, that uh, Trevor Reese Jones was the only person wearing a seatbelt at the point of impact. He wasn't wearing a seatbelt all the way through the journey. We knew that because that's standard bodyguard procedure anyway. He shouldn't have been wearing a seatbelt. But uh, the stories um, until recently were that in the last few moments before the crash he managed to get his seatbelt on and he was the only one wearing a seatbelt, thus he was the only survivor. Mm -hmm. But actually it's come out in the report again that even, even uh, Trevor Reese jones wasn't wearing a seatbelt, so nobody was wearing a seatbelt no. in that car. And you can no. clearly see Dodie Indeed. is leaning over, presumably looking out the window at yeah. the motorcycle uh, paparazzi, now, if he did have a seatbelt on, he wouldn't even be able to lean over that no, far. No, indeed. Okay, so the only sole survivor, shall we talk a little bit about Trevor Reese Trevor Jones? Reese Jones. Um, what's Trevor Reese Jones' background? Well, he's, uh, he came from uh, the uh, Elite Parachute Regiment, we mm -hmm. know that much, and uh, he, uh, he joined um, Mohammed Al Fayed security staff on leaving the Paras. Mm -hmm. And he was, he, was, he was one of Mohammed Al Fayed's security staff on the night of the crash. Mm. Now, the, the, so, the Paras are sort of known as a kind of elite. Kind they of are an elite. Partner. One one notch below perhaps the SAS, you know, they're, okay. they're, they're the elite of the actual army, yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. Now, is it true that, you know, Trevor Reese Jones says that he remembers nothing? Yeah, it's true that he says it. Well... He's had a couple of flashbacks, but mm -hmm. it might as well be nothing. He remembers being followed by a motorbike, he said. Mm -hmm. uh, one or two little bits, but, but irrelevant, really. He, mm -hmm. he remembers uh, uh, virtually nothing, yeah. Now, there's a, a book that's been published that carries Trevor Reese Jones's name on the front cover. Yeah. But it actually, uh, the authorship is actually attributed to another person. Yeah. Now, I've read that book, and one of the interesting things is that um, out of the very, very tiny fragments that he does remember, uh, he does actually say that if Henri Paul was speeding at a ridiculous speed, 
he would have said to Henri Paul, I think you're going a bit too fast. And Absolutely. according to Trevor Rhys-Jones, that car was not going as fast as the mainstream media told us. So yeah, could indeed, you just yeah. sort of tell us what this whole situation was with the speedometer yeah, and yeah. the speed? I mean, it's, it's interesting because, yeah, Trevor Rhys-Jones has said that. He said mm. if he'd have noticed similarly about Henri Poul's uh, a, a alleged uh, inebriated state, mm. yeah, he would have noticed and he would have said, these are trained bodyguards, you know, they're trained to observe people's behaviour, yes. whether they've been drinking, whether they haven't, whether they're driving too fast, you know, this guy was driving the Princess of Wales and Dodie, who was, who was Trevor Reese's Jones' personal charge that night, so he would have noticed and he would have got on Henri Paul's case if he was driving recklessly or too fast. Uh, but with regard to, what was the other question that you were saying um, there? The speedometer. The speedometer, that's right. The stories that came out immediately after the crash, virtually the next day, plastered all over the British press anyway, was that the speedometer had been stuck. It jammed on 192 kilometers per hour uh, on impact. Now, Mercedes... Well, it's very fast anyway, but that's a fact. And, um, but nonetheless, Mercedes cars uh, uh, are made in such a way that the, the speedometer always reverts to zero. It never jams on 192, or, mm. or, or, or it never jams on any particular speed. It reverts to zero on impact. It's like the airbags coming out. Mm -hmm. An impact will send the speedometer back to zero. And again, with Lord Stevens' report, we've now... Uh, we've, we've found, uh, discovered that indeed it did revert, revert to zero. So this whole story of, of the, the speed of the car being, the, the, the being speedometer, yeah exactly, it was all planned to show, I believe, to show the evidence suggests mm. uh, that was the media ploy to, 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 to create this character of Henri Paul. He was drunk, he was driving way too fast, look how fast he was going, the speedometer stuck on that speed that he was doing. Yes. It's nonsense. It's nonsense and we know that that's not true, mainly due to the uh, things that Trevor Rhys Jones has remembered. He remembers yeah. that Henri Paul was, you know, just acting normally. Yeah. There's never been a suggestion from Trevor Rhys Jones that Henri Paul was drunk. Absolutely, not quite the opposite. Quite the uh -huh. opposite. He's made it very, very clear that mm -hmm. had Henri Paul been in any way drunk or incapable, mm -hmm. there is no way. And not just Trevor Rhys Jones. Trevor Rhys Jones' partner on that night, Kez Wingfield, the other bodyguard. Yes. Both were in the were in the bar with with Henri Paul in the in the hotel lobby. They were with him all evening. Once he returned, once Henri Paul returned back to the Ritz Hotel, for the two hours prior to the crash, mm -hmm. both of them uh, have, have, have 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 said quite clearly, if we thought at any time Henri Paul had been incapable through drink, we would not have let him get behind the car, uh, but be behind the wheel of the car. Yeah, but I'm always saying this from the beginning that is the head of the royal family. And I suspect not only Prince Charles, but without Prince Philip, who is uh, racist at the core. Gro yeah. No, but it's, I'm saying it, I'm not worried. I'm saying it all the time, from the beginning. So what evidence do you have for that? The evidence has already been detailed in the application which I made in traditional review in Scotland. Right?
most people like able to tell that these um, specifically designed components, which are all um, constructed and, and laid out in a very, very logical manner, even somebody with a mild amount of mechanical knowledge would be able to detect a part used access to inspect the wreckage of the car uh, which was um, carrying Diana. And I believe that's because um, if you were to drill any new parts into this engine, if you were to add anything, your own separate enclosures, in actual fact, everything here, the covers for the lights, they have little light emblems so that you know that this is how you change the bulb. Um, this is the water windscreen wiper fluid uh, f uh, filler at all. Uh, an experienced Mercedes engineer would immediately uh, be able to detect that there'd been a modification. Um, and even somebody without any um, specialist Mercedes mechanical training would be... And you can see that there are emblems all over the car. Things are clearly marked. There's labels telling you what everything is. And it's interesting that Mercedes engineers were refused, point-blankly refused,